How do we engage all learners when we're not in the room? Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, is a lens for looking at all aspects of a learning experience, curriculum, instruction, and environment to make learning goals clear, anticipate barriers, and design flexible pathways to goals that minimize those barriers. How can we use UDL to support successful remote learning for all? Hello, my name is Bill Wilmot. I'm an implementation specialist at CAST, a nonprofit research, design, and professional learning organization, and the originator of the UDL framework. In my past lives, I've been a middle school math and science teacher and a school leader at Arts Integrated and Inclusive Schools. Let's start with a three minute version of a two day introduction to UDL and then think about how this can support teachers and students in remote learning. There are two core ideas in UDL that are more evident than ever during remote learning. Learner variability is the norm. Every brain is as unique as a fingerprint. When we as teachers walk into a classroom of 30 students, we have 30 different learners in front of us. Most teachers know this to be true based on their experience and fMRI scans of the brain in action are confirming it. A second core concept is more of a shift in thinking. Rather than focusing on learners' assets and deficits, what they can and can't do, UDL calls us to identify barriers in the environment of learning. The barriers are in the learning environment, not the learner. Wait, that's a big shift. UDL thinking really grows out of the world of universal design. The idea in architecture and other areas of design that we design from the beginning for the greatest degree of variability rather than retrofitting. In learning, if variability is the norm and the barriers in the environment, then it is our responsibility as educators to make learning accessible for all. This means that we have to shift from thinking of a one-size-fits-all model to a flexible model that embraces, supports, and designs for the variability of all learners. How do we do it? UDL guides us to think through this process in an organized way. First, identify a clear, relevant, rigorous goal. This sounds easier than perhaps it is. You have to really think about what you care about most. Are you assessing a skill or content? If a skill, then make the content flexible. If content, then offer multiple supported ways to demonstrate that content. You can always integrate skills and content later. Once we have identified a clear, rigorous goal, next we anticipate those barriers in the learning environment. This is where design gets interesting and fun. If you've heard of UDL before, you've likely seen these colorful UDL guidelines. The UDL guidelines are an ongoing iterative effort to summarize research from cognitive psychology, neuroscience, and the learning sciences about variability of learners in a concrete and usable way. The big takeaways, learners vary in how they engage with learning, in the ways they take in and organize information, and the ways they act on and express what they know. The guidelines call for designing flexibility into the learning environment to support these dimensions of variability. So when we work to anticipate barriers in the learning environment, we can consider barriers to engagement, representation, and action and expression. Final step, design options using the same UDL guidelines to minimize those barriers. If the lack of relevance is the barrier, we could couch our genetics course in a context that has more meaning perhaps a project on researching genetic history of a family or studying professions in genetics that rely on the content they are learning. That's multiple means of engagement. If text complexity is a barrier to learning the intricate details of genetics, then we might offer audio versions of the text or accompanying videos or glossaries for students to use as needed. That's multiple means of representation. If the barrier is that the end of unit exam is the only way for learners to show what they know, then we might design content requirements into projects, giving them flexible ways to demonstrate that knowledge. That's multiple means of action and expression. Okay, that's the three minute version of UDL. Now let's take what we know and apply it to remote learning immediately. Where to start? As always, from a UDL perspective, let's start with the goal. In essence, we have three options when considering learning for the rest of the year. The three R's. We can reduce, 
take away learning goals that we had planned to pursue. We can replicate if what we had planned to do in the classroom easily translates to remote learning. Or we can redesign if what we had planned would not work in a remote learning environment. So our first step in remote learning is reducing, identifying the goals that really matter. What do we really want learners to accomplish between now and the end of the year? Next, as we're deciding whether to replicate or redesign, identify barriers to guide your thinking. So what are some of the barriers embedded in remote learning? Well, I, the teacher, am not in the room with them every day. They're not in the room with each other every day. Zoom is exhausting. Tech takes a while to figure out. Not everyone has tech at home. There are distractions at home. The curriculum may not seem as relevant. Family priorities may not be on remote learning. There's background knowledge needed, distraction from peers, so many different pieces of learning to organize. Okay, so there are lots of barriers in remote learning. What to do about them? Let's look at just one. I, the teacher, am not present. This is a big one and has implications for all three UDL principles, engaging learners, representing and organizing information, and acting on what you know. So let's explore a few options that could minimize those barriers. I'm really just sharing the great ideas of the teachers that I've worked with. If I were there, I could get them interested. Instead, I need to be very clear on what the goal is and why, both for students and for parents. I can use Flipgrid, a video sharing tool for everything from personal reflection to giving personal feedback to learners to creating a joke telling stage. I can host open office hours, flexible times to check in or just work together, brought to us by Zoom, Google Meet, Remind app, collaborative Google Docs. If I were there, I could just answer their questions. Instead, I can share content in a variety of forms, email, Google Classroom, video, digital books, audio books, books in the mail, phone, Zoom. Check out Bookshare and the National Center for Accessible Educational Materials for more options. I can guide learner thinking with how-to or FAQ videos that walk students through a concept, a process, directions for a project, or even how to navigate online resources. Check out Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic, or QuickTime to record your screen. If I were there, I could help organize. Instead, I'm providing flexible support for students and parents to manage their own schedules. I have created a stuck station with content and organizational resources and a help button that allows students to reach out anytime. So we don't have time to go through all of the barriers that we identified, but you get a taste for how the UDL framework can support an organized approach to making learning more accessible and more focused on developing learning expertise. But wait, let's look at that list of barriers again. Except for the first three, these were all present before remote learning and will be when we get back into our classrooms. To me, that means that there are probably solutions that we've developed during remote learning that will still be relevant during face-to-face -face learning. Indeed, maybe the line between the two is not so bright as it seemed before. Maybe the two-minute math resource videos that we made for learners can be available in the classroom. Maybe the options for ways to show what they know can stay in place. And clearly sharing our goals and the purpose behind them while being flexible on how learners meet them can endure. Thank you for joining to learn a little bit about UDL and remote learning. Happy designing. For links, more resources, and to reach out to CAS to learn more about UDL, see the accompanying document for this lightning talk. Stay well.